Hey everybody and welcome to this special edition of the Facebook Ads with a Twang podcast. I'm your host Ben Blackman and on this this episode we're going to be talking about how coaches can create successful Facebook ads. We're not going to be using going by the normal 10 minutes or less episode. This is going to be essentially like a mini training. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, welcome to special edition number one, How Coaches Can Create Successful Facebook Ads. I am absolutely thrilled to have you on this episode, and I just want to go over a couple of quick things. Uh, I designed this specifically for coaches, mostly, and you know, when I was mapping this out, I was thinking about life coaches and business coaches, health coaches, that kind of thing, but... Uh, if you're in any service related business, a lot of this stuff will be applicable. However, I do just reference coaches while we're going through it. The other thing is, as I was going through all this, I realized how much information it really is. And, you know, I thought, I'm going to do kind of a supplement to this episode. So I created this, for lack of a better word, a mini course uh, with four uh, lessons in it. And then actually a bonus lesson is 100% free. You're welcome to it. Uh, It just kind of gets into some of the nitty gritty uh, of some of the things that you'll need to create successful Facebook ads, uh, and and, you know, without getting caught up in all the the nuances and all the uh, uh, things that people tend to get caught up in. So let's go ahead and just kind of dive right in and talk about what makes Facebook ads different for coaches. And one of the key things that that I believe that it does for you is it allows you to leverage your time. And one of the ways it does that is because now you can get in front of the right people and test what's going on quickly. Right. So, uh, you know, you could test a different offer. You could test a different um, uh you know, a price range, you can scale. I mean, you can do all kinds of things and it makes you less dependent on other marketing methods. So for example, if you're, you know, always trying to network and go to events and you kind of don't want to do that as much or, or speak or referrals or whatever it is, now you can do Facebook ads and leverage that time better. But this is something that I hear coaches tell me though about why they don't use Facebook ads. and, And it's mainly because, they don't enjoy marketing. Does that sound like you? Does that sound familiar? Uh, it, you know, a lot of them tell me they're, they they kind of shy away or they just kind of give up quick. Like they'll run a Facebook ad and when they don't have immediate success, they just kind of fall back into whatever they were doing. And I totally understand that. Uh, some of the other things that they tell me as to why they don't use uh, Facebook ads more is because maybe they're not convinced that Facebook ads will work for them. And, and the cost of it, right? Because there's a learning curve and you, there's time you've got to invest. There's money. Uh, you've got to kind of figure out what works and what doesn't. And, and uh, you know, they don't want to put their money down the Facebook ads black hole. And I certainly don't blame them for that. That's why you have to be very strategic when you're doing your Facebook ads. But you also don't want to be afraid of uh, things that may not work or things that, that didn't work in your Facebook ads. That's part of it. That's part of any successful Facebook um, ads campaign. There are going to be things that don't work. You have to figure out that as much as you have to figure out what does work. And then another thing, just to kind of piggyback on that, is that technology seems to be a barrier for a lot of coaches. And what I mean is is that some coaches uh, that I've spoken with, they're super, you know, I mean, they're super knowledgeable about what they're doing uh, they they're really good at uh, their um, you know why they got into coaching and, and what they do with their coaching business and helping their clients but the technology of running Facebook ads and landing pages and email service and all this stuff just seems overwhelming so they, they just don't want to get into that and they've realized that a lot of them anyway that I've spoken with have realized that their their assistant or virtual assistants and stuff like that may not be, um, you know, it, it's hard uh, to teach them how to do it because they don't know how to do it to teach them how to do it, if that makes sense. So it's just, you know, hey, they're thinking Facebook ads is just more trouble than it's worth. <laughs> and I understand that because, you know, uh, when I first got into Facebook ads, it it was complicated for me too. Even wh- though I started when they very first came out, and and the tools that we had to use then were you know a lot different than they are today. But here, I just want to kind of mention to you why I would reconsider using Facebook ads if you've kind of you know have been thinking you didn't want to use them, or why you should just use Facebook ads in general. And and the first thing is is you really are able to widen your reach, right? So now if you're not using Facebook ads uh, and you're 
you're using other marketing methods, you probably have a relatively narrow reach, a number of people that you can get in front of. Um, you also don't have the ability to basically turn the faucet on and off as you do with Facebook ads. So the really uh, cool thing about Facebook is once you start figuring out which ads are working, you can you know dial them up or dial them down if you want to. Uh, you can do it either way and really start to bring in more leads or less or however you want to handle it. So Facebook ads are very powerful in that respect. And then another thing is that you can create brand awareness for yourself uh, and your coaching business quickly with Facebook ads. You can get in front of people. You can you know, show them your content. You can show them your offers. You can show them video. You can show them whatever you want and get in front of those people so that uh, people start becoming aware of you more quickly. It's great to have a Facebook group and to post stuff on your business page and all that, but without Facebook ads, you can't really scale it very far. But with Facebook ads, you can. You can really take it. I mean, the sky is virtually the limit uh, when it comes to stuff like that. Now let's go over the five biggest mistakes that coaches tend to make when they're you know trying to start their Facebook ads. And the first thing is the lack of research. I mean, research is probably not the funnest part for most of us. I know it's not for me. Okay, I know people who love it, but I'm not one of them. And, but researching is really the crucial part. This is the make or break part of Facebook ads. I, I would say, and I'm just guessing, that nine out of ten coaches that I talk to, and I talk to a lot, okay, they just they think they know who their ideal client is, and they base their ad on that, and they write out the copy and select an image and go. And so that's what happens with their Facebook ads. But really, that this is just not a good plan. <laughs> okay, Your ideal client may not be who you think. They're not you. If you think you're your own ideal client, you're going to have a tough time writing a great Facebook ad because we'll be obviously biased to what we think people will respond to. And when we have that bias thinking that we know what our ideal client wants or is going to respond to, then it keeps us from looking at our ads objectively and, and saying what works and what doesn't work and being willing to, to be honest with ourselves on that. The other thing is, is that you have to research your offer, make sure that you have a compelling offer, and definitely research your competitors. Good night. You've got to see what they're doing out there uh, and make sure that you understand and how you're going to differentiate yourself, your unique selling proposition. Even if you think that you, you are so niche down that you don't have competitors, people are still vying for, you know, your target audience in the news feed, even if they don't have the same specific offer. So you really need to take a look at that. The next thing, biggest mistake, is not being patient. So running Facebook ads can, can be a little nerve-wracking. It is for me, even running my own ads, and I've broken this rule more times than I can count. And the rule is, is relax. You've got to relax when you're running your Facebook ads. Give them time to work. Because if you start an ad and you look at it two hours later and you haven't gotten the results that you want and you shut it down, then you're going to have a really difficult, if not impossible, time ever making Facebook ads work. Because even though you can get in front of the ideal clients quickly, it doesn't mean you're going to get you that you are going to get in front of them quickly. Meaning, yeah, you might get there, but then again, you might not. You've got to give Facebook time to sort out who you're targeting and how they're going to respond. And it, take, it takes a few days. So be patient with your ads. Give them a chance to work. That doesn't mean they're going to work, but but they're definitely not going to work if you cut them off too soon. So give them a chance. Number three is budget size. So I talk to a lot of people, and, and there's a lot of philosophies out there on how to budget for Facebook ads. And one of them is, you know, you run a $5 ad set, uh, you know, for 10 ad sets. So $50 a day using $5 a day on each. And, you know, that does work in, for some things. Okay. For others, it doesn't. And what I'm going to tell you is, is that when Facebook is, the, the Facebook news feed is full. Okay. So they they cannot put any more ads in there than what are in there right now. So now what does it come down to? How much you're bidding and the relevancy of the ad. That's what it comes down to. So Facebook's going to look at how the ad is going to connect with the ideal audience that you're targeting. And then after that, it's going to say, okay, how much are you bidding? Uh, you know, how, what's your budget versus somebody who's willing to pay a hundred dollars a day. And I'm not saying you need to do a hundred dollars a day. I'm just pointing that out. So 
when you break it down to those terms, you can see that you may not get the, uh, you know, space that you were thinking. You know, it may not be quite uh, as effective as it would if you had a decent budget. The other thing is, and I'm just throwing this out there as an example. Say you're doing a webinar, right, an automated webinar, and say it costs, and I'm just throwing it out there, let's say it costs, you know, $15 a piece to register somebody or $10 a piece to register somebody, and you're doing a $10 a day budget. Well, then you're going to get one person registered a day. So at the end of 30 days, you're going to have 30 people. And this goes back to the patience part of it. In 30 days, if you've only gotten 30 people, you're going to say it doesn't work because you haven't gotten in front of enough people. Well, that's what budget size does to you. It hampers your ability to get in front of enough people. Now, you could come back and say, well, yeah, but I should be getting webinar registrations for $3 a piece. Well, how do you know you should? Because somebody else said they are? That, that's not a good comparison. Um, I, whenever I compare campaigns or somebody tells me, hey, Ben, you know, I'm getting, um, you know, ad clicks for this amount or, you know, registrations for that amount or whatever it is, almost invariably, when I actually find out the nitty gritty, we tend to find out that, you know, oh, wait a minute, they also, they already had a 10,000 followers on Instagram. So, you know, they, they already had that warm audience and, and you don't. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, of course they're going to get them for that low. They already have a 10,000 person follower uh, or 10,000 followers um, or they have, you know, a 10,000 person email list, you know, and they're, they're just not telling you that part of it. And I'm not saying that they're withholding it. I'm just saying that it's hard to compare. And often we also try to compare across industries. So somebody will say they're doing it for one industry and then they compare it to somebody who's uh, doing the same marketing type for another industry. Well, those aren't really fair comparisons because the response rates for those industries might be two different things, right? So if somebody in health and wellness might respond differently, it might be a different cost than people who respond for, um, you know, how to market Facebook ads or how to market using Facebook ads, right? I mean, that those are two different industries. So bear that in mind when you're thinking about it and the budget size. Mistake number four measuring results. And so I think that that this is a very difficult thing for a lot of people because they're not sure what kind of results they should be expecting or they're comparing their results to somebody else. So yeah, I totally get that. I mean, where do you start? I mean, why wouldn't you compare them if somebody else tells you they're getting, you know, webinar leads at $2 a piece? Why wouldn't you say, well, I should be getting them at $2 a piece? Okay. The challenge that I have with stuff like that is usually when I look into it, we don't know um, the specifics, meaning when somebody says, oh, yeah, I got webinar leads at $2 a piece, what they don't mention is they already had a 20,000 person email list. <laughs> okay. They're not marketing straight to cold traffic, or maybe only, you know, 20% of it's cold traffic or, or something like that. Uh, or, you know, they have 100,000 followers on Facebook or, or something along those lines. And so, that's the difference is that it's hard to compare the two or, or worse it's like a different totally different industry maybe you're in the health industry and they're in the business opportunity industry and those are two completely different things so you know cost per leads and stuff like that are hard to compare uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about what kind of metrics you should look like uh, look for a little later on uh, but in general um, make sure what you're thinking about is what um, each potential lead is worth to you. I mean, that's what it comes down to, you know, and, and what your pricing your your pricing model is, because that's going to affect what you can pay per lead. Don't be afraid to pay um, enough for a lead um, just because, you know, I mean, don't be afraid not to pay enough for a lead just because you think it should be lower. Okay, make the numbers work for you. So let's kind of put this in perspective real quick. And, and this is a very real uh, life scenario, okay? This, uh, this happens a lot. So let's just say that you have a $3,000 coaching program that you put people in, all right? And uh, the maximum that you're willing to pay is $100 per lead. And when I say lead, I mean uh, you're willing to pay $100 for each person uh, to get them on the phone. And so you get five people. Every time you get five people on the phone, at least one of them buys your $3,000 coaching package. So, you know, if you wanted uh, to, for that scenario to play out, you would have to spend $500 to get one sale. So you'd make $3,000 minus the $500 you spent. That's $2,500. Well, is that worth it to you? I mean, does that make the numbers work for you and your business? And if it does, then you say, okay, it's worth it. It's worth it for me to pay $100 per lead. 
Now, if you wanted to make $25,000, not $2,500, all you have to do is increase the number of leads, right? So if each lead cost you 100 bucks, then you would just have to spend $5,000 instead of $500. Then you're going to get 50 leads. You're going to get one out of every five of those leads are going to turn into sales. So that's 10 sales at $3,000 apiece. That's $30,000 minus your $5,000 ad spend. That's $25,000. Now, there's other costs. I know, you know, hosting services and and email providers and that kind of thing. But I'm just saying in general, it'll be about twenty five thousand. And so I think that's where people get caught up because they they see a number like, oh gosh, I got to spend five thousand dollars. Well, yeah. I mean, if you want to, you know, make a lot of money, you've got to be willing to spend the money. And a lot of people want to grow into it as well. But the challenge with growing into it is, is they don't allow enough room for error. Meaning when you first start off in your Facebook ads, you may not hit a home run immediately. It may take a little bit of testing and tweaking before you start, you know, really settling in and getting the numbers that you want. So you've got to factor that in. Uh, this is an ideal scenario. Initially, you may be paying $300 a lead, right? But does the number, do the numbers still work? Does it still make sense? Is it good enough for you to keep going on? I mean, you have to evaluate at that point. So just think about that. Now, biggest mistake number five is inputting the ad incorrectly. And I, and this is really the only technology part of it that uh, I put in the biggest mistakes. But what happens often is that because te technology can be overwhelming for some, is that they miss a, a, a certain step. I just want to tell you there's not a magic box to check or you know place to go in the power editor or ads manager to make all your ads just work perfectly there's, there's not one <laughs> okay you just want to make sure you follow step by step how to input ads correctly and you really uh, only want to show ads in the Facebook news feed for the most part there are exceptions to that but often I see people showing them on what we call the audience network or they're showing them in messenger and all that stuff's good it's just not good up front. You want to get the basics up front and then move on to the bigger stuff or, or the other stuff, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and talk about how to run a successful Facebook ad campaign. And the first thing I want you to think about is, um, you know, how much you're willing to commit. All right. And what I mean is, is are you willing to commit a, a budget and are you willing to stick to that budget and monitor your ads for long enough to figure it out? Yes, it takes a commitment from you, okay? I, it's okay to hire somebody else to do all this stuff, but you really do need to understand how the ads work. It's not a good idea to not understand how the ads work because, you know, if the person that you hire, they're not doing a good job or you have to hire somebody else or, you're, you know, somebody's giving you a report on how things are going, you want to be able to understand that information. It's your business. And so you want to make a commitment. All right. You don't want to make the kind of commitment of, okay, I'm going to run a $5 a day ad and I'm going to freak out after three hours. That's not a commitment. <laughs> okay. People do that all the time. Uh, number two, you have to define your ideal client. All right. And I'm going to put a link in uh, here about a place that you can go to, to help, um, I, uh, you know, set up your customer avatar or customer persona but your ideal client is crucial and I mentioned this before uh, in the biggest mistakes of, of figuring who out exactly who that is before you ever think about running an ad so that you can talk the language that they're talking so that you can feel where they're coming from uh, it doesn't mean these are going to be your only clients don't get me wrong your ideal client doesn't mean that you're so narrow that you can't take on anybody else this is just who you would like to have if given a choice Okay, and you do have a choice, just so you know. Number three, you must define the objective of your ad. Not all ads need to be about closing a sale or getting a lead. That's not all ads are like that. It doesn't mean you have to figure that out. This is really important. I think people, uh, or at least a lot of coaches that I talk to, think that they've got to get the sale done. <laughs> okay, right then and there, and you don't. So keep it simple. You might want you, the objective of your of your ad might be an awareness ad. You just want people to be aware that you're out there and that that you exist, that you have uh, coaching services. So you might do that by running ads to a blog post, right? Instead of running them to some kind of webinar or lead generation or something like that, you run them to a blog post or maybe a podcast. That's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm running ads to this podcast, okay? So that coaches are familiar that this is out there. Um, 
And then, you know, I'm not selling anything on here. I'm not trying to, you know, get you to call me or get on the phone or anything like that. I'm just running it so that you're aware. Okay. Uh, or Facebook Live. Facebook Live is amazing. If you're not using Facebook Live, I would if I were you. Uh, but running ads. So once you've gotten your Facebook Live, once it's over, you can run ads to it. And, and then drive people to that so people can be aware of you. Another thing that you could do is do a lead magnet, right? So a lead magnet would be some kind of lead generation uh, tool like uh, a checklist, a video series, um, something like that that you're asking people to opt in for. And then once they opt in, maybe you're going to send them on an email series and ask them to call you uh, or set up a schedule an appointment or something like that. Maybe that's what it looks like. Uh, then the, another thing would be live trainings. Live trainings are really, really good uh, because, you know, you can sell your course or your services or whatever it is that you have by doing it live. And people like live. They feel like they connect with you. They feel like they can ask questions. Uh, and you don't want to be make yourself unavailable to them when they are asking questions, just so you know. The more available you make yourself to them, the be- the more sales you're going to get. Just just bear that in mind. So, you know, maybe your Facebook ad, as that's what you're doing, you're just signing them, them up to come to your live training. Um, another one's um, you might want them to interact with Messenger bots. So maybe you're familiar with them, maybe you're not. Uh, but Messenger bots will allow you to, one of the greatest things you can do is you can really talk to people who are interacting with your ads so that you can figure out what they want, what they're looking for, and that kind of thing. So some kind of filtering system. Uh, and so messenger bots are really good for that. And then the last thing is, uh, is what I call my secret weapon. And my secret weapon is, is automated webinars for high ticket coaching. And I, you actually have a course on this whole thing about how to do that. But the, the, the automated webinars are just such an easy, I say easy, they're such a simple way to get you know, people through your process, your sales process in a short period of time, have them, you know, start to build some trust in you, like you enough to want to uh, take the next step and get on the phone with you. And then you can sell them on your amazing coaching programs and automated webinars are just really good for that. So again, I'm just saying you need to define the objective of your ad, right? You know, maybe it's one of the ones I mentioned, maybe it's something else. That's okay. But you definitely just want to define that objective so you know which direction you need to go. And if if you're new to Facebook ads, then start with just an awareness ad. Run it. Measure the results. See how it's going for you. And And once you do that, then you'll get more confidence to run other ones. Now let's decide on your budget. Ooh, this might be scary. <laughs> and I do talk about budgeting. I believe it's in my very first podcast I was talking about budgeting. So if you want to check that one out, it's episode number one. But let's just talk about budget. And if you if you just don't know where to start, like you're just thinking, you know, I, you know, I have no idea what I should do. Should I do $5 a day? Should I do $100 a day? I mean, what should I do? Just start with $25 a day. Okay. Run uh, one ad set and do $25 a day. And if, if, you know, I like what I was talking about before, it cost you a hundred dollars per lead, right? Then it's going to take you about four days to get a lead. And then if that's true and you close one out of every five leads, then it's going to take you 20 days to close somebody. Just bear that in mind. That's what I'm talking about with the patients. A lot of people want them, you know, that day or that week, and you could do it depending on your budget. But uh, ha- know those numbers. Now, what if you're not going to do, uh, you know, what I was talking about? What if you're just going to have people opt in, right? You're just going to have them opt into your email list uh, because you're going to give them some amazing free thing or whatever. And that opt-in costs you about three bucks on average. So you're, you're going to get about how many? Well, you're going to get about eight a day. If it, if it costs you $3 on average, you're going to have eight a day. I just want to warn you that the way that Facebook ads works is it's very cyclical. You might have one day where the opt-ins cost you, you know, 75 cents a piece. And you're thinking, yes, 75 cents. That's what I want. And then the next day they cost you $20 a piece, right? So it's, it's what the average is. It's not what happens on one given day. So, 
you know, just be realistic about how many people you're going to get on your list. And then you also need to determine once people get on your list, how many can you close? So it's going to be different. You know, leads, like I was talking about before, that would be consultations, meaning people you're going to get on the phone, people who schedule an appointment with you. Opt-ins are different. People will opt in that have no, um, even no inkling or no thought process to ever buying anything, period. You're also going to get bogus email addresses, um, and you're getting people just looking for freebies. You're going to get competition. You've got to remember that. So uh, you can't use the same numbers for people who are scheduling appointments as uh, the same as people who are going to opt in for your free thing. Okay, But you won't know those numbers till you put them out there. right? Some people get a very engaged audience up front, and some people don't. Once you start following up with them, and initially you might follow them up with them, follow up with them individually. Okay, if you can, if you have the time, if you're able to do that. So if you don't know where to start with your budget, at least start with twenty-five dollars a day. If you can do a hundred dollars a day, great, do it. Um, what you'll want to do is opt in for the the little mini course I was talking about, the free mini course, uh, because I'm, I talk about a strategy there. And in that strategy, you're going to want to set up, you know, different, uh, a certain number of what we call ad sets. And I, I'm going to kind of go over that in just a minute. And then a certain number of ads. Okay. So you've decided on at least $25 a day, if not more, or, you know, do what you can. The next thing is, is you want to outline the process you're going to want them to go through. So I was talking about objectives a minute ago. What's their objective? Now outline the process. You want to run an ad and send them to a landing page to opt in and then a follow-up sequence via email. Is that what you want to do? I mean, it depends on which direction you want to take them, but you need to outline it up front. And I again, I go over this as well in the mini course. Uh, but you want to go ahead and set up that process before you start running Facebook ads, because that process is going to be crucial that they that it works correctly, works the way you want it to. Just remember, uh, no matter what you do, you're going to have an email follow-up sequence. How many emails are you going to do immediately uh, or within a week or within two weeks? And then how are you going to follow up with them after those two weeks or a week or whatever it is? Now, next, we're going to talk about setting up your tracking. And so I do uh, go over this in a couple of different um, episodes, but what I'm talking about is the Facebook Pixel, which the Facebook Pixel is a way for you to track people who come to you via your Facebook ads. So they go to your website, they go to your blog post, they go to your you know, landing page, whatever it is, so you can track them. That's what it's for. And it's just this little piece of code. And a lot of people are really afraid of this little piece of code because they're afraid they're going to mess something up. Well, you're not. You don't have to understand what the code means. You just have to know it's going to track people. Okay. So, um, again, I go through that on episodes 15 and 16, uh, and you can check that out in the show notes. But you've got to set up your tracking because, you know, your ads are only as good as what you can measure. And um, the other thing is, is that you want to be able to retarget people. I also go over that in the mini course as well in the bonus section. But retargeting is crucial because it gives you a chance to get in front of somebody again. How many times have you seen something that you thought you might buy but you didn't but then when you saw it again you bought it the second time or third time or fifth time or whatever it is well that's what retargeting does maybe they don't want to buy from you right now maybe they don't want to set up an appointment right now but they do later right so you just need to stay in front of them you need to stay at the top of conscious of, of their conscious mind so that when when they're ready you're there uh, now next let's we're going to really kind of talk about the ad creative. And so if, if this is what you were thinking we we're going to talk about, hey, we're here. <laughs> okay. So before you do uh, the ad creative, and by the way, I intentionally do it this way, thinking about the ad creative before we start talking about what we call targeting, because when you create the ad, it makes it much easier to do your targeting. And I'll show you here in just a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to be thinking about two separate ads. All right. Now, these are just going to be uh, minimal changes. We might have two. Um, uh, we're going to have two ads that have the same copy, but they're either going to have two separate images or two separate videos or one video and one image or whatever. All right. So um, let's just talk about images for just a second. The image really needs to be impactful and courageous. Uh, and what I mean by courageous is bold. You don't want to have a mundane image with a blue background that blends into everything else that's on Facebook. It has to stick out. 
because you're competing against you know your you know somebody's uncle Fred who does funny stuff on the weekends and post about it. You're, that's who you're competing, and that's what they're looking for. They're not looking for your ad, so you have to stand out. Okay, should you have text in the ad image? Eh, maybe, but just remember when you put text in there, that screams it's an ad. Okay, if you can get away with no text, which I don't use text much, then leave it out. All right. Um, should you use a picture of yourself? Again, maybe. Most of the time when you don't know somebody, when it's a cold audience, I wouldn't use an image of yourself. But uh, that is something that's worth testing. I have seen them work well, too. Uh, one thing that's kind of this little couple of little tricks that you can think about is one, you can use a black background. Black background is... A compelling for people to look at it and see what it's all about. So if you can use a black background, that's good. Also, if you can use vertical lines or um, diagonal lines in the ad, people literally cannot look away from that. So if there's a way to have uh, those kind of uh, um, you know, diagonal lines in the ad, then you are almost assured that somebody's going to at least stop scrolling long enough to see that part of it. Now, whether or not they'll continue to read the copy is anybody's guess. Um, you hope that they do because you have compelling copy in there. Uh, another little uh, trick that you might want to think about is increasing the contrast. So if you have kind of a vivid image already, um, go use you know a, a, an image editing um, service like Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R dot com, Express, uh, and you can increase the contrast, increase it to about 40%. It will help the image jump off the phone page because most people are going to be seeing you on phone, right? So you want to uh, design your ads with that in mind. Now, let's just talk a real quick about video. So why would you want to use video to begin with? Well, Video is easy to get people to uh, take a quick look at and then retarget because anybody that watches the video, you can set up a retargeting audience and I actually show you how to do that in uh, one of my other episodes. Um, but you can actually set up a retargeting audience and then send them another ad. So, you know, maybe you only want people who watch 25% of the video or 50% or, or people that only watch 30 seconds, whatever it is. Okay, you can easily retarget them, and you, you know, uh, video views uh, are you know pennies on the dollar versus clicks versus opt-ins and all that. Now the downside is you don't have them on your email list yet, but still you have a chance to get in front of them again. Now. One other thing that's kind of cool about videos, you don't have to create a production type video. You can if you want, but for the most part, you can create a simple video. I saw somebody do one with a drone the other day. It was really good. Uh, it was a good video. It was interesting because it was from a drone, right? Uh, you know, I've seen people, um, uh, one of the best ones I've ever seen is somebody actually walking down the street in New York and talking. And, and that video and just holding the phone up. That's really good. Um, you can also do like short handwriting, you know, get somebody on Fiverr or Freelancer to do a handwriting drawing video, that kind of thing. Just be cautious about, remember, Facebook wants 20% or less text in the image, uh, and that includes video. So you have to kind of be cautious with that. And the video can be as simple as just you holding your phone up and talking. You know, as long as it's compelling, then do it. Most ads, you're going to be okay if the video, if the ad uh, length time is two minutes or less. If it's super compelling, though, it can be as long as you want it. But do two minutes or less, and that will usually works out. And then you want, to, you want to invite them to the next step in the video, right? Make sure that you mention it. Don't just assume they're going to see it or do it. Tell them what to do. Tell them specifically where to go, where to click what to do. Um, if you're sending them to a blog post, great, lovely. Tell them that's what you're doing. Hey, this is a blog post. Just check it out. Love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, just go ahead and click the button below or whatever it is. Okay. Now let's talk copy. I love copy. Just so you know, I used to do copy all the time and I love it. <laughs> okay. Now the question is, is should you do long or short? Um, you know, I see that this debate all the time. I don't read long copy. Why would I, you know, show that to my audience, blah, blah, blah. And the thing is, again, you're not your ideal client. You're, you're not the client. Okay. You, you don't know what people are going to do until you put it out there. Long copy is a very, very effective as long as it's compelling. But then again, short copy is not effective if it's not compelling too. So you just need to write enough to get the job done. You don't need to think of copy to just tell more unless you're, you know, you have a purpose behind it. So when you're writing copy for your ads, think about it that way. 
a couple of uh, uh, quick tips are write like you talk. That's just a good quick way to do it down and dirty. All right. Don't, you know, put in contractions. Uh, I'm not saying you need to be completely uh, unaware of, of uh, or, you know, unfeeling about using improper grammar or anything like that, even though that is okay. Uh, but what I am saying is, is write like you talk. Because when they're reading it, they're saying it in their head. We're not writing a novel. We're writing marketing copy to get people to respond. Don't use 10 words when five will do. I think I got that from um, Ocean's Eleven or something. But even so, I, I've read that before. And, you know, that's what people tend to do. They tend to get wordy in their copy, and they're just overkilling it. That's not good copy. That's why people won't read long copy or when long copy doesn't work because too much. They're not giving any more information than they've given out before. If you want a really good resource, something that's easy to read, understand, and implement, Grab a copy of the Ad Week Copywriting Handbook by Joe Sugarman, one of the best copywriting um, ha- you know, uh, books out there. It rivals almost any course out there. I've seen courses out there that just go on and on and on, and they don't really give you actionable stuff to do, whereas this does. So you know, that's a good one. There's other good ones. Okay, I don't want to say there's not. Now, there are really good courses out there I've seen, but this one is really easy to get started. So now... Let's go ahead and jump right into the strategy of it. So, okay, so now that you, and by the way, remember, you're creating two ads. Just pick one set of copy, either long or short, and then images. One or two, pick two images or two videos or one image, one video, something like that, but you're going to create two ads. And so, in the mini course, I go over how to create this strategy, just so you know, the free mini course. But, uh, the strategy is what we call the three by two strategy. We're basically creating three ad sets, okay? So that's three uh, target sets, if you will, and with two ads each. It's not six different ads. It's going to be two ads in each of those ad sets. So the two ads that you create, each of those two ads are going to go each of those ad sets. And so this is how it's going to break down. Here's your targeting. Your targeting is going to be celebrities slash interests. So um, the celebrities might be, um, you know, maybe it's uh, Dr. Oz in one. And maybe the interest um, is something like nutrition, right? Something like that. So... It doesn't mean you have to have both. It just means either or. It could be both. You just want to. You don't want to have too big of an audience size. You want to narrow your audience size down to about two and a half million or less if you can. But um, you can you can target either way, celebrities or interests or both if you need to use both. Uh, the next one would be software and services. So you know, software um, could be something like My Fitness Pal, or, you know, an app on the phone or something like that, maybe. Um, and then services might be, you know, Nutrisystem. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out there. Okay. But that's kind of what I'm getting at. You, you know, um, and then the next thing, next uh, targeting or next ad set would be books or magazines. So whatever the most recent books are out there that are that people really love, that's a good route to go. And or magazines that they're tip that they're likely to subscribe to. Now, if you're not familiar with what a magazine is, uh, it's like an app. That, that you physically open with your hands you, and you turn pages. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I heard that joke the other day and I thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, but, uh, you know, um, any magazine that, that would be within your, your target audience. All right, so now that you've gotten that down, we're gonna you're gonna go in and set up the ad campaign and choose the con- the conversion objective. That's what we're gonna go off of right now. Since I don't know which objective you have, we're gonna say it's conversions. And conversions typically mean people are opting in for your lead magnet or opting in for your webinar or whatever. And we're gonna create one ad set and then two ads inside that ad set. Each of the two ads that we talked about before, and. The ad set, again, is where you put your audience, what we talked about before, celebrities, interests, software services, or books and magazines, any one of those sets. Um, then what you're going to do is, is you're going to go back and duplicate the ad set and create two more audiences. I'm, I'm sorry, and create two, and it'll create two ads under that ad, ad set. You don't have to create two more audiences. I'm sorry. So when you 
when you duplicate that ad set, it automatically does it. You just have to rename it, uh, rename the ad set, and then put the appropriate interest in there. And then, of course, rename the underlying ads if you wish. And then you'll do that also for your third one. And that's all you have to do. It's really not any harder than that. I do go over that in the, in the mini course. I'm sure you know that by now, but I just kind of wanted to mention it. So now you've gotten that set up and you're ready to run your ads. But before you do, let me mention something real quick. If you have a, you know, a polarizing uh, topic, so let's just say that what you do is you treat people with anxiety or, you know, or you coach people with anxiety, sorry, or you coach people with specific, you know, um, uh, health issues. I wouldn't create all those ads and all those ad sets until I knew I got my copy approved for one of them first. And the reason is, is you don't want to uh, show up and then find out that that all six of those ads um, aren't going to be approved because the copy is not what Facebook will allow, which like Facebook will not. And so you need to review the rules that Facebook has for ad copy and what you can say and not say in an ad. So um, do one and then duplicate it. If yours is not very polarizing or anything like that, then I would just go ahead and create them all. Okay. Your ads are there. You've uploaded them. They're getting ready to run and you want to let them run long enough for Facebook to get through what would they call their learning period. And that's typically 50 conversions, meaning 50 opt-ins or registrations or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, it, I have a checklist for this and you can see that in the mini course, but the, the it, it's not always 50 conversions. It may just be 20 conversions. Facebook will let you know it, when you go in to look at your ads and your monitoring. If you look in the ad sets uh, in the in the uh, metrics area, you'll see it'll say if it's learning or not. So um, let, them ro- let them run long enough if you can to get through the learning period. So what's going to happen is some days, like I said before, some days you're going to see they're going to cost a lot less, some days a lot more. Facebook's learning during that time. If they're trying to show the ads to the right people and it doesn't know exactly who the best people is. So say if they showed it to an ad, a person who opted in at five bucks, you might think, oh, that's great, five bucks, that's awesome. And then the next day they showed it to somebody and it took $20 to get somebody to opt in. You might think, oh, that's terrible. But, um, what they're trying to do is they, they didn't know the people who on the $20 day could have been only $2. They didn't know until they showed them the ads. So that's how Facebook ads works really um, when they're trying to optimize for conversions. So you want to evaluate your results weekly. Uh, don't keep staring at the ads. I put that in the checklist as well, but staring at the ads is just not a good plan. Um, have a couple of days, two or three set days that you're going to look at the ads and that's it. Otherwise, let them run. And now, once you've let them run and you're going to look at them, look at, these are the metrics that are typically what we're looking for. We're looking for a 1% click-through rate or also known as CTR. And the click-through rate uh, just means you know how many people clicked on the ad versus how many people saw it. Then we want at least, and it depends, you could have much higher on this, but we want at least a 25% conversion rate on the landing page or registration page, whatever it is. You know, some I get 60%, some 70%. Um, it really depends, but that's the people who opt in. So, you know, you just have to look at those numbers. So it may not be the ad. Maybe the issue is your landing page, right? So if your landing page, your conversion rates on the landing page are low, maybe you need to go back and change that. And then you also want to know what an acceptable closing rate is. You'll have to define that based on your target audience since that it'll vary. You know, some people can close one out of four, some one out of five, some one out of ten. Okay, you have to know what your own closing rate is. All right. And then once you've done that, once you've looked at the metrics, then you can decide which ads are working, which aren't, and cut cut them off and cut them back on, whatever you need to do. And after that, you can scale what is working. I talked about it on episode 42 on how to scale. You need to be strategic about it. You don't need to just go in and you know, raise up the budget. <laughs> okay, don't do that. <laughs> so that is all you have to do. <laughs> it's simple, right? 
Uh, it's just uh, clear as mud, I know. Like I said, you're probably going to have to go back through this episode. That's okay. Please do that. Um, again, go to the mini course. It's free. Check it out. It's just a. It's just four short, really short, super short lessons uh, and a bonus section. And I reference some other episodes, but it'll really help you kick off and get your Facebook ads going. So if you need any help, please feel free to message me on Facebook. Uh, you know, I'm on there all the time. You can email me, Ben at one focus marketing. That's O N E focus marketing.com. Or you can join my closed Facebook group, Funnel Strategies for Facebook. If you like this episode and, and you like what I have to say about Facebook ads or you think it was, this was helpful anyway, please, please leave me a review. I would love that so much if you could leave me a review and subscribe uh, to my podcast. Most episodes are, are less than 10 minutes. They're not nearly this long. So I appreciate you sticking it out and I hope you got some value out of this. If you need anything at all, please reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you and hear how your ads are going. Thanks so much and I will see you on the next episode. Bye for now.